if the Rolex HS underwent some fusion with the JOC Polaris, I think you would end up with this watch. A watch that sits on the borderline of being dressy and casual or sporty or not. Maybe. It's like a guy who pairs a sports jacket with a t-shirt. Is he trying to be dressy, casual, both? No one knows, but it looks good so who cares. A 40mm wide by 96 thick stainless steel Sporesi watch. Yes, I just made up a word to describe this thing, but that's part of the reason why I love it so much. The brand calls it a retro contemporary style because the design was inspired by the reference 6073. Kinda. It's just this triangular step on the lugs that's similar. The rest of the watch is basically a new design. After 7 months of having the 56 on, I'm still not exactly sure why I like it so much. By the way, check out my initial impression video of when I got it. Maybe it's the large bevels that make up the integrated crown guards, or the drop profile of the lugs, or the blue sector dial layout, or maybe even the playful font on the date wheel. I think you get the point. It's not trying to be like anything else, and in a day and age where every new design seems to be taking design cues from one of three popular watches, this is refreshing. On wrist, it's very comfortable, it's moderately sized, thin, and only has a lug to lug of 47mm. The steel bracelet, while at glance seems like it has no micro adjustment whatsoever, actually has the same system that's found on the overseas. A big F you to those who always complain about micro adjust. Vacheron somehow managed to fit a micro adjust on the small butterfly clasp that no one seems to ever mention. Ever. Okay, given there's only like two articles about this watch online, but still, this feature alone makes the 56 such a comfortable daily wear. And no, you can't dive with it, but why are you trying to dive with this watch? It'll hold up to range just fine. I doubt most of you are as active as you need your watches to be. Now, before we continue, I want to give a quick thank you to the sponsor of this video, Watch Crunch. Watch Crunch is a platform where crazy collectors like you and me can engage in meaningful discussions about all things horology. The founders wanted to create a dedicated and inviting space free of negativity that often plagues these type of platforms. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Every written post, photo, and video are watch related, so you won't see some random sneezing panda pop up on your feed, unless it's the MBNF panda. The interface is very intuitive and new features are constantly being added to make the overall user experience more enjoyable. It's well designed so it doesn't look like one of those old school forums that were made in the early 2000s. Check out the link below to my post on Watch Crunch and add on to the ongoing discussion. Thanks to Watch Crunch for sponsoring today's video. I'm on there along with other watch collectors, so please do join in. Now, after I posted my first video about this watch, this is the Vacheron Constant 56. There were two main questions I got asked. First, does it seem too dressy because it's essentially all polished? Well, no, not really because it's all polished and somehow that makes the polishing seem less noticeable. If some of it was polished, then yeah, the shiny bits would stand out more, but since it's reflecting everything, it's not as obvious. The fingerprints though, yeah, it's a dirty little thing, and I kinda like it that way. Second question, does the non-Geneva steel Cartier based movement bother you? No, it really doesn't and that just comes down to my personal preferences. I prioritize design and as long as the movement is working well and finished to the same quality as the rest of the watch, I'm more than satisfied. The Caliber 1326 is assembled, finished, and regulated by VC, and the rotor is 22 karat gold. Which leads to the question, is it as well made as a Geneva sealed movement like on the overseas? I don't see anything that's obvious. At high magnification, you can tell the anglage on the overseas is hand finished, opposed to the machine finished anglage on the 56. By the way, AP uses machine bevels for most of the watches, but I think people forget that the overseas is 22,500 and this 56 is 14,800. 300 on a leather strap. So at almost a $10,000 difference, I would expect the overseas to have better finishing because you are paying more. But what I think is important to realize is that the 56 movement is still very well done relative to its competition. I doubt you would have been able to tell that the anglage was machine finish if I didn't tell you. It's still Vacheron and it wouldn't make sense for the brand to put a crappy movement inside of any of their watches, entry level or not. If the time only 56 was also put through the process of getting its case and movement Geneva sealed, then the price would not be where it is now. The 56 models with complications, the Day Date for example, has the Geneva Hallmark, but it's also 20,100 on leather. 
Even further, the complete calendar is 26400. However, the seemingly boring time only model has one up against its more expensive and Geneva sealed brothers. Only this time only version and specifically only the blue dot variant of the 56 is sold with the bracelet. That's because the time only day date and complete calendar 56 models use different K shapes so the end links aren't cross compatible. This can seem like a shame because the bracelet is incredible but at the same time that makes this time only model a bit more unique in the lineup and I for some reason think that this was intentional to make the time only 56 model not strictly a dress watch. Something versatile, something obtainable and overall something that's practical in and out to be an everyday watch. Nothing more, nothing less. It'll be fine in the rain or under a sink so stop complaining about the water resistance you couch diver. Now this 56 is clearly not for everyone. No watch is made for everyone even though the brand tried to. But the fact that this 56 somehow made its way into the collection of the most annoying and pickiest watch person I know, me, speaks volumes to me. Sorry. Point is, I think people focus way too much on the negatives of this watch instead of its positives, and it's usually those who never actually tried it on, or at the very least, held one in person. It's a damn good watch, and a very fun watch to wear. But that said, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram at loom underscore shots, and I will see you guys in the next video. Vacheron 56. Vacheron Constantin. Vacheron Constantin. Vacheron. 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 Vacheron Constantin.